Hey, dude, you're just in time, man. We're about ready to talk about cannabis stocks. That's what it is. <laughs> you better believe it is. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Tuesday, 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 September 5th. Now, what we like to do on this show, we try to keep it light, but we are truly focused in on penny stocks that have heat. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any and every market that have potential to make us money. Now, I normally determine heat in a stock by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for a chart that has heat. It looks like it's ready to take off. It looks tempting. When I find a chart like that, then I go rummaging around through all the information looking for a catalyst. Well, last week we were talking about the AI sector, which is a hot sector, and it's going to be taking off and growing very quickly. I mean, come on, it's AI, it's going to move fast. The other sector which is on fire now, oh, and this is kind of funny, it is the cannabis sector. It is on fire, folks. See, this has been a long time coming. We have, what, 45 states right now that have legalized cannabis one way or another. You only need 50% to get it legalized. Have laws change, 50% of the country has to agree. That's all it takes. We don't even have to vote on it. We're at 45 states right now. Well, here last week, the uh, Health and Human Services made a direct request of the DEA to kindly reschedule cannabis from Schedule 1, which has cannabis on par with heroin, as dangerous as fentanyl and cocaine. Really? To bring it down to a Class 3, like alcohol, you know, like Tylenol. You know, it's, we've been selling this in most of our states for many a years now, and has crime gone up? Has the world turned upside down? No, we're actually finding all sorts of benefits for it. So we need to change the laws. It's imminently going to happen, and it looks like it could happen now outside of saying the Senate and the House of Representatives getting together and voting. This has been tried over and over again, and we ain't getting nowhere. Too many people, too many opinions, too much arguing, blah, blah, blah. Just give it to one organization, let them make a decision, and it is done. Now, I'm quite hyped and believe they are going to pass it, but there are no guarantees. They could say no right from the get-go and say, we need this, we need that, we need more study, blah, blah, blah. So it could be a while, but the markets are moving now on the buzz. The biggest advantage, though, is going to be the financial benefits that these companies get. All the companies in the U.S., they have never been allowed banking. They couldn't deposit their money, still can't. It's out there somewhere. About $26 billion is what we did last year. Where's all that money, right? Two, they haven't had any loans. Nobody's helped them, not from the vantage point of banking. They've had lots of loans come from private investors, and they're holding a lot of notes to get them to this point. And last but definitely not least, they haven't got any tax deductions. Imagine operating a business that's doing a billion dollars worth of revenues. You know it's costing you money. What, one third, $300 million, and you can't deduct any of it? As soon as you start getting deductions, the first thing that grows is your profit margin. Every deduction is money you get to keep. That's why you want those deductions. Well, when every company gets them at the same time, all of their bottom lines are going to rise. They're all going to be worth more. That is the exciting part. That is the mother of all catalysts here. Not to mention distribution. What's grown in California can now go anywhere in the country, can go anywhere in the world. And what's out there in the world can finally come into us. All of this is only good for business. Now, if you were lucky enough to catch my video yesterday, I gave you six hot cannabis stocks. We had time to talk about three of them, and those three had gains today. The other three we didn't have time to talk about, they had really good gains today. So we're going to look at two of those three. The third one, there's nothing wrong with it. I just had to set it aside because there's another company we have to take a look at because it is affiliated with one of the companies we are looking at. And it just didn't make sense not to include it now. So the first company we're taking a look at is Acreage Holdings, ticker ACRDF. Now, that F right there is a dead giveaway. This is a foreign company. Now, I know they got a U.S. address here in New York. They got a U.S. phone number, and they even tell us we have a principal address in New York City. But that F tells me they are a foreign company. 
Well, come on down the page. You can see where they're incorporated at. British Columbia, Canada, 1989. So they've been around a while. So they are a Canadian company working in the U.S. cannabis industry, having to obey the same exact laws. Now, another detail I need to pass along to you, lest you get confused. I don't know why, but Acreage Holdings has two cannabis stocks on the OTCQX, and they look just the same. We're looking at ACRDF. The other one is ticker ACRHF. Same exact name, description, address, phone number. It all looks the same. Here's the differences. First off, this is a Class E ordinary share. We are trading a Class D ordinary share here. Most stock is a Class A ordinary share. I don't think we have to worry too much about it. I just thought I'd point it out. Another one of the differences, how about the price? The one we're not considering is about 18 cents and dropped 2% today. The one we are considering is up near 32 cents and jumped 25% today. The last detail that definitely shows me their different stocks is the share structure. In the Class E ordinary shares, they've got about 69 million. And as I'm going to show you, we've got about 29 million over here. So they're definitely different stocks. I don't know what the major differences are, but this is the one taking gains. This is also the one that the management owns the most shares of. Between the two, this is the largest holdings. So ticker ACRDF, she finished the day, as I said, at about 32 cents and over 25% gains. She is on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. You have to audit your financials here and you basically got to give us all the information you have on the company. It is the most transparent. It's the most trustworthy tier. They've also got a verified profile and a transfer agent more validated information, looking hot. Plus, we got a real sweet bonus here, penny stock exempt. This should remove any fear you have of it being a risky startup company. Why? Well, the definition of penny stock exempt says that they've been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars of revenues or assets during that entire time period, and they've kept up with their financials. In other words, they've proven to us that they're responsible. So they are looking outstanding in all that regard. So what does Acreage Holdings do? Yes, we know they work with cannabis, but where? How? Well, they tell us here that their principal address is in New York City. Acreage is a multi-state operator of cannabis cultivation and retailing facilities in the U.S., including the company's national retail brand. Now, as I said, when you work in any state in the United States, you build up your existence there. Well, every state you have to start over. You have to build a new grow facility. And when you're talking about marijuana, all of that has to be grown indoors, whether it be under lights in a building or in a greenhouse, but it has to be indoors. Hemp can be grown outdoors, but marijuana has to be grown indoors. So every state they have to build a grow house. And of course, they've got to put up their dispensaries and all of that as well. Now they've got about eight states they're in right now. They've got multiple brands, the Botanist, Prime Medical brand, Innocent Edibles, and Tweed brands. They've got a couple others as well. And some of them are just locked up in certain states. Others are going around through all the states. Now this Tweed brand, the Tweed brand isn't actually theirs, but they have gotten the rights to sell it because they have a deal sitting on the table. We're over here in their most recent financial. Lots of good tidbits of information here. Just to catch you up with what's been going on, they've been busy in January. January 2nd, the company acquired cultivation, processing, and retail operations in Maine. On January 10th, the company commenced adult use operations in Connecticut. That's two new states. On January 31st, the company launched Fast Acting Gummies, or the Time Gummies, under the flagship brand The Botanist in Illinois, Maine, Massachusetts, and Ohio. And then some real big news here, folks. The floating share arrangement was approved at the special meeting. The floating share uh, meeting was about the deal that they have made with Canopy. 
Canopy Growth and this company did a deal back in 2022 and they just had news come out in March that it has been approved by the US government. You've got a company in Canada and a company in the US which want to do business together but because of the laws they can't do anything over that border. So we're waiting for these laws to change. Canopy is going to open up a whole new Canopy Growth USA division and this is going to be a part of that division, acreage, plus some others as well. Now they also give us their uh, financials. We don't get any over at the OTC. This is what we get. They did $58 million at the end of June 2023, which is down a little bit year over year from last year at the same time when they were at $61 million. However, in saying that, in their news press, they tell us that they had just recorded their 10th consecutive quarter of positive adjusted EBITDA. You might as well think of EBITDA as gross revenues. It's earnings before you deduct everything else. Achieved record revenue growth in New Jersey and Connecticut, and they are streamlining their initiatives, which are underway for the preparation and completion of the Canopy USA transaction, as I was telling you about. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Not huge. <laughs> she jumped maybe 40% going from 12,000 to just over 17,000. Share structure for the company. Well, that's not bad. Our outstanding share count is just over 34 million. Insiders have almost 5 million. That leaves us with just about 30 million. It's not a super terrific float, but it's not bad at all. 30 million isn't a bad float. Financials, as I said, they don't have anything over here, but we know that they did $58 million the last quarter, and they've had 10 consecutive quarters of uh, revenues growing. Disclosures. Yeah, I did look at these disclosures. Actually, there was nothing here to consider. Uh, a couple of these were about the financials, the 10Q and the 8K. One was about uh, management, and another one is about shares, which we're not going to jump into right now. And last is the news. Most of this we've already covered. The retail operations in Connecticut, uh, closing the acquisition with Canopy, and a new piece of news that came out on July 19th. Acreage and Botanica launched Journeyman THC Lemonades in Illinois, just adding more and more products as they go along. So the company's got everything they need. Business is growing. They're adding more states. They're adding more products. Everything looks good. How's that chart look? Doing all of our charting for these stocks on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform you get when you go to TD Ameritrade. And signing up with them, that don't cost anything either. So we are looking at a five-year, one-week chart for acreage holdings, ticker ACRDF. Back in November of 2020, we had a high of $4.80. And in July, we hit a low of just over 14 cents. Jumping down to that six month view, five months ago, we had a high of $1.40. She has pretty much been falling all of this time. Down to that low of 14 cents she hit on July 5th. From there, she has been slowly working her way towards the 200. And now that it's getting close, you can see she is stretching towards it. She is pushing up towards it. All of our oscillators say that. You can see everything is starting to push up right now. Volume is very low, but look at our, our SMAs. They are all turning up right now, and the 200 is coming down. They're going to collide, and this is going to be a perfect chance for this to break out, especially with this catalyst right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So 20 days ago, we had a high of 33 cents. She drooped down and came back up in a big bowl, and right now she's at just under 32 cents. Our oscillators, they're actually strong right now. They were cold, but they have built up a lot of strength. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, a lot like your MACD. You read them the same. Both of these are climbing right now. Green bars are accumulating on our MACD. And our RSI has been climbing. It started down there at 50 and is at 64. Everything looks like it's going the right direction. Five day, five minute. So our low was just yesterday. That was at 18 cents. Our high today is at 31.9 cents. And she's been climbing. That's just been one solid climb. And it doesn't look like she has really had a whole lot of activity. Let me back this out to 10 days. No, I was trying to see if she was jumping 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week when the buzz came out about the DEA. I don't see it. I mean, I see a jump here and there, but she wasn't climbing. Now she's climbing. Bar after bar after bar is all green. All of our SMAs look sweet. Oscillators, phew, couldn't ask for anything better. They're all pushing up. Our RSI is up there at 64. ACRDF. DF. <laughs> I think this is going to run, especially when the deal changes for America's laws, then their deal with canopy growth can happen. And when they all come together, that has got to be a big explosive catalyst right there in itself. So ACRDF, for a lot of reasons, this belongs on your watch list. So it only seems to make sense that we now take a look at canopy growth. This is ticker CGC, Canopy Growth Corporation. This is a Canadian company working out of Canada and the rest of the world, but not here in the United States. Not yet. She's trying to through acreage and a lot of other deals. She finished the day today a little over 68 cents with a little more than 24% gains. She's on the major exchange, the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. You can trade it pre-market and aftermarket as well. You can't do that with the OTC penny stocks. So what is Canopy Growth all about? Well, they tell us here that Canopy Growth is a world-leading diversified cannabis company. We operate a collection of diverse brands and curated strain varieties. Supported by over half a million square feet of indoor and greenhouse production capacity. Like I said, anything you smoke has to be grown indoors. And they have partnered with some of the leading names of the sector. Matter of fact, let's take a look at some of those names. As I was telling you, Tweed is one of their subsidiaries, but Acreage is selling those products. And they've got 10 subsidiaries, I believe it is, here in Canada. Tweed, Dojo, Space, and they each deal with different types of products. Most of them deal with flour and cannabis. Some have gummies, beverages. They've got Ace Valley, 7 Acres, 7 Acres Craft, Vertical, TWD, Wana, and highway those are all for canada now they've got two of them down here in the united states but neither one of them is selling thc only cbd products one martha stewart yes martha stewart is with this company she signed on as an ambassador she put her name on some of their products has even come up with some recipes of her own these are all being made with hemp and then another company called Wana, which is making gummies. These are only CBD gummies in the United States until the laws change and the two companies can merge. Then all of that is going to change. And then we've got three subsidiaries that are international. Spectrum Therapeutics, which deals with medical cannabis. This is for patients that have prescriptions. And they've got a lot of customers. Stores and Bickle, one of the first companies in the vaporizer business. And then last but not least, the 24-hour skin solutions, this works. This is a skincare company with international footprint. Oh, almost missed it, BioSteel. BioSteel is their hydration sports beverage with no sugar in it, but there's no CBDs, there's no THC, there's nothing like that in it, not as far as I can see. It's just a hydration drink. Now getting some more information, as I told you, the company is trying to get into America, and they're doing this through Acreage and a couple of other companies, but they haven't got it done yet because the laws haven't changed, and it's going to be called Canopy USA. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a spin out onto the NASDAQ or if it's just going to be a subsidiary, but they tell us here that the company is creating a new U.S. holding company structure called Canopy USA and assigning ownership of all Canopy Growth U.S. cannabis investments to Canopy USA, which will enable it to exercise rights to acquire Acreage, Jetty, and Wana. And as I told you, this has already been approved by the shareholders. It's been approved by the United States. Now we just got to get the DEA to approve a schedule change for cannabis. They go on to tell us here that Canopy USA will have a presence in 21 states and access to consumers through more than 2,150 third-party retail distribution points. Holy cow. So once the DEA does this, this company is ready to launch 21 states and over 2,000 dispensaries. So what is the relative volume around Canopy today? Now that's what I want to see. What a jump. 
going from just over 29 million, definitely not under the radar, to over 130 million shares today. Wow. Share structure for CGC. We only got the outstanding share count here, and it's kind of high. Three quarter billion shares. They don't tell us to float. It can be anywhere up to 732 million, or it could be considerably less. Maybe some research will fill you in on what the float is. Checking the financials out. At the end of 2022, she did $458 million. Don't forget those three zeros up there. It'll make a lot more sense to you. And at the end of her fiscal year for 2023, which means the next quarter they start their 2024, they dropped $120 million down to 333. million. Still very strong revenues, but that was a big drop. Looking at her quarterly, well, they're doing about an average of $90 million each quarter. Took a big drop from 2022 to the first quarter of 23, losing $21 million. Now, we have seen a lot of penny stocks dropping the first quarter of 2023 for whatever reason. But that is a big recovery, dropping 21 and jumping 30. We went from 62 to 91 million this last quarter. Looking at our disclosures, we do have some recent disclosures over here. One, it looks like they are thinking about putting more shares on the market. But the rest of them all pretty much have to do with them closing all these deals that they are working on. They too see the DEA is probably going to go through with this. And then taking a look at the news. All right. Is it going to come up here? I don't think there's any news over here, folks. Oh, putts. I got news over here, so it doesn't matter. I've gotten it all from Cision PR News, and I've just grabbed some of the highlights here going back to July. Canopy Growth enhances their financial flexibility and delivers a company balance sheet. $437 million up. Things are growing. July 18th, Canopy Growth congratulates Juana and Jetty on entry into new state level markets. They have just entered into Florida. These are two brand new companies that they've just gotten. Stores and Bickle announced certification of medical vaporizers under new EU medical device regulations. And the big piece of news that just happened here recently, August 17th, Canopy Growth enters into an agreement for the sale of Hershey Drive facility in Smith Falls, Ontario, Canada. I think it was back in 2021, maybe 2020, this company bought a Hershey chocolate factory for like $6.6 million. And Tweed and Spectrum have been using it all this time. Well, they just unloaded it for $53 million. What a profit. All right, so you can see they've got products. They're in lots of states. They're working around the world. We haven't gone into a lot of information here, folks, but they're moving on the charts. I've got to leave some due diligence for you, but we will look at the chart. Let's go take a look at that. We're taking a look at CGC. This is Canopy Growth Corporation, and we're looking at a one-week, five-year chart so you can get an idea of what sort of high she's had. Her high hit back in October of 2018, just over $59. And then in the stimulus month, February of 2021, when everybody got that last check from the government, she had a nice jump up to $55. And since then, she's had a huge fall all the way down here to $0.34, cents, which she just hit last July. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. So it was back here in February, we had a high of $3.22, and look at that fall. She just did not slow up at all, hit this low here, and really didn't change anything. She just started scraping across the floor, banging her head against the 200, not getting anywhere, until the news came out these last few days. Now, I got a bunch of resistances drawn here based off of our lines here. We are starting to break through these right now. These last four days, you can see the volume has increased. All of our SMAs have turned and are climbing up. Our price is on top of that nine day and she is surging. She's turning into a rocket stock, rocket stock right now. So you gotta be careful. What goes up must come down. So watch for the dip. Getting in at the right time is just as important as getting out at the right time. Our osculators are all very strong. PPO is pushing up just like the MACD. RSI is in the overbought clear up at 79 right now. Everything looks strong on the four-hour chart. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour. 
not really a lot going on here. She was hanging around the 200, going up and over and under. And then right here, when the news came out about the DEA, she started to climb. She's had some volatility in here, bouncing off of her 50 and shooting. But she has jumped about 100% from 39 cents up to 81 cents, over 100% in the last four days. And she is looking strong. Oscillators say she is still strong. She had that bounce off to 50 right there and she bounced on her PPO. She bounced on her MACD. She really dropped on her RSI, but she is back in the overbought right now at 76. Five day, five minute. Not a bad chart. Our low here of 38 cents. She's on top of the 200. She did take a dip yesterday. She came back up. I'm talking Friday. Came back up today strong. She started here at about 55 cents, ended at the end of the close day, 68 cents, and after market, she has been tearing it up. She's put on another 20, 22 cents already, and she's fighting to climb right now, but she is strong. Oscillators are getting a bit messy over here. Everything looks like it's cooling off and falling right now, but does that look like it's really falling? CGC, folks, it's a Canadian company, not yet in America, but as soon as the DEA changes the law, they will be in America, and they could explode. Last hot cannabis stock we're looking at is Forefront Ventures, ticker FFNTF. That F on the end, that tells us it is a foreign company, and this is the same situation. It's another Canadian company from British Columbia that is operating here in the United States as an MSO, working in multiple states, lots of different brands. They finished the day today at about 21 and a half cents with over 37% gains. They too are on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. They've got that verified profile, transfer agent verified, that bonus, the penny stock exempt, and they've got independent directors. Now, you only need independent directors if you have plans on uplisting. So, if that gives you any heads up. So, let's see what we can learn about Forefront Ventures. They tell us they are a national, vertically integrated, multi-state cannabis operator that owns or manages operations and facilities in strategic medical and adult use cannabis markets, including California, Illinois, Massachusetts, Michigan, and Washington. Since its founding in 2011, Forefront has built a strong reputation for its high standards and low cost cultivation. That's a big deal. Everybody's trying to produce as much cannabis as they can for the least amount of money. And production methodologies, earned through a track record of success in facility design, cultivation, genetics, growing processes, manufacturing, purchasing, distribution, and retail. Like I said, they're vertical. They've got to take care of every aspect of business and be smart about it. To date, Forefront has successfully brought to market more than 20 different cannabis brands and over 1,800 products. Wow! which are strategically distributed through its wholly owned and operated mission dispensaries and retail outlets in its core markets. As the company continues to drive value for its shareholders, its team is applying its decade of expertise in the sector across the cannabis industry value chain and ecosystem. So what was the relative volume around the company today? That's nice, it's tripled, going from 202,000 to 682,000. Now they're not huge numbers, but that's a huge increase and we know what's got it moving and there's more of this news to come. Share structure for Forefront. Outstanding share count is pretty high, up there at 657 million. They tell us the insiders own roughly 90 million, which leaves us the lion's share. 568 million, over a half a billion shares. Financials for Forefront. Well, the revenues are growing at leaps and bounds. 2019, they were only at 19 million only. <laughs> In 2020, they're at 57 million. 2021, 104. And by 2022, they were at 118 million. Steady growth all along the way. Quarterly, let's see what we got going on over here. 28, 32, 31, 30, 30. So they're running about 30 million average every quarter. Steady money, not having any problems whatsoever. 
checking out those disclosures for the company. We've got a bunch of them over here that are current, but there's only actually one that we really need to take a look at. Form 4. This is whenever the insiders, the management of the company, acquire or dispose of shares, which includes buying and selling, which is really what we're interested in. Here we have a purchase, though it's nothing fantastic. It was the CEO. That's right there. And they tell us that he bought himself 14,500 shares at 12 and a half cents each. I don't know what that calculates out to, but it's not much. And total holdings, the CEO owns 32 million shares of the company's stock. Looking at the news, we are going back here to May. Forefront Ventures elevates the cannabis-infused chocolate category, premiering new Cocoa Gems variety pack. I remember when they were trying to get cannabis oil into chocolate, they would not mix. It just wouldn't work. We had to come up with nano emulsion. We had to make the molecules so small that they would break down and dissolve. Now we finally have THC chocolate. In June on the 29th, Forefront launches new live resin, limited edition edibles, and comprehensive concentrates lineup significantly expanding brand portfolio in Massachusetts. And then at the end of July, the company signs a definitive agreement for an extension of senior secured debt, which is always good if you can get more time to pay off your debt. And then we got a lot of news here about their financials. But as you can see, the company has a lot of different products, 1,800 of them, 20 different brands. They're working in quite a few states, and they are a part of this rise in prices as well. As soon as the DEA comes out with any news, as long as it's not negative, we're going to see a lot of jumping in the cannabis sector. Let's go take a look at this chart. Let's take a look now, ticker FFNTF. This is Forefront Ventures. We're looking at a five-year, one-week chart, so you can get an idea about the high bubble. Not very impressive on this chart. She hit a high of $2.25 March of 2019. Fell all the way down here to $0.22 cents and then took another run, hitting a high of $1.94 in the stimulus month, <laughs> February 2021. Then she had a long, drawn-out fall down to the slow of $0.6.7, cents, which she just hit here last August. Looking at the six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, we had a high of $0.40 cents and a long, drawn-out fall. And as you can see, that's an atypical breakout chart, a beautiful one. She has been underneath the 200 all this time, and over the last four days, she started pushing up towards it, breaking it, and is way above it. She started her run down here at uh, $0.9.5 cents and went to $0.22. Cents. So you're looking at almost 150% gains. Now, she hasn't shown any red here. She looks like a rocket stock to me, so we got to keep our eye on the bounce. These prices, these SMAs, they're on rubber bands. If they get too far apart from each other, smack, they come right back. So you got to keep your eye on that. As I said, the volume has been getting stronger here, and all of our osculators look outstanding. Every single one of them is pushing up. If all of your osculators are pushing up, you can't go wrong. Hmm. 20-day, one-hour view. Nothing going on. Hit that low bubble and stayed down there. Four days ago, she started to break out, and she's been pushing up. And look at all of our SMAs. Beautiful, laying out like a nice fork, nice evenly spread. Oscillators are all still climbing. Every single one of them is still pushing up. Our RSI is at 78 in the overbought. Five day, five minute. That's a brilliant chart, folks. There is about 9.1 cents and a steady climb up to that 22.7 cents. She is way above her 200, bouncing off of the 50, bouncing off the 20, and that is where she's paying her homage now. The 20-day SMA, you can see she's bouncing off of that. Looks like she's rolling around to come back down to it. You got to keep your eyes on these bounces. But all these stocks we're looking at, folks, they're all hot cannabis stocks. These are companies that are making millions of dollars, not just hundreds of thousands. They're making millions of dollars in multiple states, have thousands of products. They are in business, and they've been fighting against the winds for a very long time. Now, as soon as the wind lets up, what do you think is going to happen? I think all of these stocks are going to run. I think most of the cannabis sector is going to run. 
Of course, you need to do your due diligence. Just don't grab any old stock. Check out their financials. Make sure that they're not in any trouble. As a matter of fact, I want to show you one more thing before you go. This is a perfect example of what not to get into. You've got to take your time to make sure you're reading all the information. This is Halo Collective, ticker H-C-A-N-F another company out of Canada. This is Pink Limited. That means that they are late on their financials, one or more of them. And if you're late for too long, you can get removed from the OTC. And you know when you're getting close to being kicked off because you get this grace period right there. Grace period gives you 15 calendar days before you're gone. But they don't tell you the date here. You've got to come over here to quote right here, click this, come down to proprietary quote eligibility, right there to tell you grace period yes the last day of the grace period is the 14th of september so they have got nine days to get their filings in or they are going to be pulled off of the otc market thrown down to the expert market now that's not a delisting it's a penalty box it's a timeout. they'll stay down there their shares cannot be bought or sold until they come out and the only way they come out is to get their financials caught up so let's see what they've got late here. Uh, um, 9.30, December, they've got three. Looks like they've got three quarters here they need to catch up on. The last one for 2022 and the first two for 2023. But I'm just giving you a heads up, folks. HCANF could be off the market in nine more days. This is why it's important to do your own research, folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.